Hey folks, Ray from DCRamrecker.com here. Today I've got everything you need to know about the new Garmin Instinct watch that just announced today. I've been using it for the past month or so, so I'm gonna run through all the nuances of it and kind of explain how to make sense of this Casio-like looking watch. Now, of course, with the particular design style they've chosen, you're either pretty much gonna love it or hate it. There's not really gonna be a lot of middle ground there, and that's probably all right. Uh, if you look at like the people that like Casio watches, you're probably gonna like this. If you don't like the 1980 style, you're probably not gonna like this. But Again, that's all right. What's really interesting though is actually what's inside of this watch. And I'm not talking like the chipsets and stuff, um, though that is actually interesting too, but I'm talking the features. This is essentially a blend of a Garmin Vivo Active Series watch, like the Vivo Active 3, with a Phoenix watch, which is their super high-end watches. Uh, and this comes in at $299, so it's definitely not the price of the Phoenix, which is like $600. Bucks. Um, and it's a little more than the price of the Vivo Active, which sits at $250 normally for the non-music version, and about $300 bucks for the music version. Uh, but there's a lot of really interesting kind of choices that Garmin's made when it comes to how they design this particular watch. So starting off with the external side of things, uh, it is waterproof to 100 meters, which is more than the Vivo Active 3, which is only 50 meters. Uh, now this is basically matches the Phoenix 5 series, which is also 100 meters. Uh, it also says it is mil spec for basically drop testing and stuff. So I can go ahead and I can, in theory, drop this. Um, do I drop it on the rock? I don't know, maybe? Oh, why not? Hold on. Good news, it's totally good. So I dropped it on the rock that time, all good. Uh, I'm not sure if the camera view can see that or not, but uh, I dropped it, it hits like straight on the, the face here. Um, and it's pretty good, maybe a tiny little, no, maybe like a little, a barely a dink scratch thing in the edge of it, but that's fine. I mean, this is the watch you're kind of looking for, a ruggedized sort of watch. Um, battery life is really interesting too. So battery life on this is 16 hours of GPS on mode uh, or two weeks of just standby mode. And they can also do ultra track up to 40 hours in Garmin's kind of reduced tracking mode so that's usually fine for hiking not so good for like running or cycling and stuff like that i'm also pretty sure if i had just dropped the vivo Active 3 on its face on that rock there this the video would have pretty much ended at that point in time so also pretty sure if i'd done that with the phoenix 5 the video would have also have ended so i'm actually kind of impressed with this and it's kind of like a little bit of a, a rubbery material in certain portions of this um, that's clearly meant to to keep it pretty ruggedized uh, on the back the charging connector is the same as a phoenix 5 and same as a v vector 3 essentially the exact same charging connector garmin has used over the past uh, two years for the vast majority of their watches uh, now i'm gonna have to pull up my notes to kind of run through all the differences compared to the v vector 3 and the phoenix 5 because there is a crap ton of difference here so if i pull up my handy dandy note pad here i'm going to run through these or attempt to run through these starting off with things that this has that the vivo active 3 does not uh, number one courses that's really the biggest one so with courses you can go ahead and do navigation and the courses here also support the magnetic compass that is built inside of this uh, so you can go ahead and basically just hold this like this and rotate it and see the heading the bearing that you're on next as part of that it has galileo support as well so that's something that the vivo active 3 does not galileo support allows you to go ahead and get different satellite signals that may be more accurate and may not be more accurate it kind of just depends on on the particular scenario this has a mini map on it so it's something that the vivo Active 3 does not so you can go ahead and see kind of where you're going uh, breadcrumb trail map is as it may be known uh, the key thing there compared to the phoenix 5 series though or any of the phoenix 5 uh, plus series is that it does not have a full map so you don't get to see all the detail of what's around you like lakes here and mountains and stuff like that just simply showing you the trail ahead of time and i'll show you that in the the hands-on portion in a moment here uh, it does have track back which is different than back to start uh, so back to start basically just points you back at the start, whereas track back um, goes ahead and takes you on the exact same route that you took getting there to begin with. Uh, it has ultra track, so as I mentioned earlier for the, the higher battery life, uh, it has elevation profiles in it, so you can go ahead and see the elevation profile of where you're going. Again, something I'll talk about in just a moment here. Distance to destination, has storm alerts, things that are not, again, in the Vivo Active 3. Um, if you're doing trail running, it has auto climb, so that means it'll change the data pages automatically uh, to, to show you climbing ascent and descent when you're going up hills. Uh, so kind of cool stuff if you do a lot of mountain uh, running and stuff like that. And a lot of that, of course, based on the barometric altimeter that's in this. So with it, you're also going to get uh, things like ascent and descent, uh, ascent rates, and, and a lot of the kind of stuff that you would expect from a trail running or a hiking type of watch. Uh, it includes sight and go, so that allows you to go ahead and just use this kind of as a simple compass. It also includes the ability to do uh, coordinate-based navigation, so you can put GPS coordinates in this if you want to as well. Uh, finally, it has area calculation, which frankly you'll never use in your life. Uh, and then it has sun and moon sunset times, as you saw, or you'll see it just a second on the uh, hands-on portion and whew, 
that's the hiking portion. Now let's talk about sports. There's more stuff on this that the Vivacta 3 does not have that it has from the sports side. Uh, 3D distance and speed, again, primarily targeted at the hiking side of stuff, uh, virtual partner. Uh, and finally, one thing it does not have though is VO2 max. So there's no VO2 max on this, which is a very peculiar like omission given a lot of Garmin's super cheap wearables actually have it uh, down to like well below $200. So I don't really understand that. So let's get right into the caveats. And there are some big caveats in this. Uh, number one, there is no Connect IQ on this. So Garmin's Connect IQ platform, in fact, I just came from a conference that talked a ton about Connect IQ and had tons of presentations on it. And somehow this $300 watch has no Connect IQ. What the, how does it not have no Connect IQ? Come on, Garmin, that's like your whole thing. You you screw this one up. I'm not I'm not joking. Like you should have Connect IQ on this. I get well, watch faces are different because of a different screen, but come on, data fields, Connect IQ, that's, that's your thing you missed it. Um, so that aside, no Garmin Pay support, so you no know, like contactless payments like you have on the Vivacta 3 and a lot of the higher-end watches now from Garmin. Uh, no music support, so no storage of music like you've seen on, again, some of Garmin's higher-end watches. No pulse ox support, so that's a uh, SPO2 reading, something they introduced on the Vivo Smart 4 uh, back about a month ago and on the Phoenix 5 uh, X Plus as well, uh, and no golfing. Uh, so again, Vivacta 3 has golfing mode, this does not. Um, last but not least, on the Phoenix side, a couple of, of changes or a couple of differences compared to the Phoenix series that are worthwhile noting. Uh, also, no advanced sensor support, so no power meters, no Varia lights, no radar, no none of that kind of stuff. It does support some of the basic sensors, so you can go ahead and do heart rate, speed, cadence. Uh, you can also do some of their hunting sensors and things like that for, I believe, archery, they have one there. Um, In-reach support as well, uh, but none of the kind of like super advanced stuff that you would expect out of the Phoenix lineup. So with all those differences outlined, that was kind of the boring part of the video. Now I'm going to show you it actually in action. Uh, so I'm going to do a hands-on. We're just going to walk through the whole watch itself, kind of like all the, the basic features and, and how it works and talk about this kind of nifty little display that has like this inset piece in it that you see there. Uh, so let's just dive straight into it. Okay, so here we are on the watch face itself. Um, now you can see at the top left-hand corner, I've got my heart rate graph over the last four hours there. Obviously it's off right now. I've been taking some photos and stuff, so that's why there's little gaps right there. Uh, I was doing some mountain biking up here. Um, on the right hand side you have the current date and of course the time sunset down there and the current battery status now i'm gonna actually show you how to customize the watch face because that's probably one of the most interesting things about this watch given how different it is from past garmin watches uh, so just hold down the left menu button right there click on watch face and you can see as i scroll down this left hand side there is a lot of watch faces 12 to be exact that you can choose from and those are basically kind of your starting points. Um, I actually like the default watch face the most, to be honest. Once I'm done with that, I go ahead and choose this upper right hand button right there to go into the customize menu. So now I can customize different segments of it. So this upper right hand portion you see is blinking there uh, and I can choose you know, different ways of displaying different metrics, whether it be steps like that, uh, elevation, uh, let's see, sunset, etc. So lots of options there. Uh, temperature, for example. I'm gonna go back and go with what I had before, which I actually like the most, which was the date. Uh, and then I can see now it's blinking for the left hand side there to change that one. Uh, so again, different options. Uh, that's my altimeter right there. Uh, let's see, you got steps, a heart rate again, uh, a, lot, so a couple options, not a ton of options, but definitely a couple options there. We'll keep it on steps for right now. Now the bottom left hand side is blinking. I can go from sunset uh, to text messages to calendar. Um, again, all, all kind of the standard options there. You could do double battery if you wanted to. And the reason is because these are actually separate options. So now I go to the choose the next one. I can see that I can change uh, that bottom right hand corner there as well. Uh, so pretty cool stuff. I'll go ahead and I'll just leave it on something that I, there we go, fire to the fifth, fine. Um, so. That's the watch face. That's how you customize these two different segments there. We'll go back to the main menu here. Actually, I'm already at the main menu. So we'll click the upper right hand button, which is how you get into the different sport modes. So you can see run, um, trail run. These are ones that I've customized and added to it. Um, you can add more down here if I keep on going to the little plus option. And I can you know add treadmill, indoor track, climb, mountain bike, pool swim. Uh, open water shouldn't be there. So that's definitely kind of a, a little bug right now. Uh, it's definitely not in the final version. Uh, so software, cross country ski, etc. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a ton of sport modes here as I go through these. Um, but if I were to choose a given sport mode, we'll go ahead and we'll go back here and I'll just choose hike for right now. You can go ahead and you can, uh, it'll immediately found GPS because I already had GPS on earlier. Uh, if I go down through here, you can see I'm changing my data fields. I haven't yet started uh, the activity itself though. Uh, so I want to first show you some options to configure things. And I go down this left hand button menu there, hold that down. I get into the hike settings. 
I can do data screens, uh, and I can add the data screens in here as well. These are kind of the default ones, but I can go, oops, there we go, click on add. I can add custom data, and this is where it gets really interesting. So I can choose a layout, and as part of those layouts, you're actually able to customize this upper right-hand corner as well. Uh, so you can see right there, this layout is uh, basically five different fields, I believe. Um, so you choose field one, for example, timer, uh, and then you just kind of iterate through this pretty quickly. I'll just show you these, just picking some sort of fields at random here, uh, just to kind of move through these real quick. Let's see, heart rate, cadence, temperature. We'll put temperature in there. Uh, keep in mind, temperature, of course, is impacted by your body temperature. So uh, that does kind of impact that a little bit. Elevation, we'll get to regular elevation there. So there you go, now I've customized that data field and now that is ready to roll. And this is true of all the different sport modes. Uh, so it's not just for, you know, hiking or whatnot. Um, in fact, if we go back, I wanna kind of show you some interesting stuff from on the sports side into running here. Uh, this is where there's some differences that I mentioned earlier with the Vivo Active 3 in terms of being able to do uh, basically racing against courses and past activities and things like that. So you have structure workouts there. You have the interval option to create new intervals. Uh, you can set a target, you can race a past activity. Uh, and then as we get into to the navigation options here and this is again true for all the different sport modes uh, you can go ahead and you can see the back to start the courses activities uh, save location site and go coordinates uh, so site and go is basically using the compass so if i were to turn this like this you can see that it's automatically turning that compass because it's a uh, magnetic compass and not just one using the speed from the gps device um, if i go back here coordinates will show the exact coordinates that i'm at right now go back again <clears throat> if we choose uh, courses here i can choose canmore hike which is uh up here where i am right now i can look at the map for example pull that up and it's kind of a mess of a course it's just uh following a bit of a trail run scenario um, i can zoom in and out of this though so i can go like that and uh, go back here i can look at the elevation plot for this course if i wanted to uh, so you can see it's got a fair little chunk of elevation uh, within that if i wanted to to go and uh, suffer through that today i've already done a bit of bit of stuff up here already uh, and then at this point if i wanted to do the course i would just click on do course and then now it's going to go ahead and show me the distance once i click start there so we'll click start so this 174 is the distance until i get to the start of the course and this is showing me the direction to follow right there uh, so if i were to rotate this um, you'll see it's going to change that and point that at the direction I should be going. I just actually pressed the uh, button there, which is why it changed the screen on you. Uh, but you can see now as I do this, it's telling me that the course is this way. Um, and if I go rotate it back again, it'll kind of change the entire map view as well. So last but not least, I want to show you some of the widgets. It's kind of the basic stuff that's there. Um, I'm just going to discard this particular uh, workout right like that. Click discard. Yep. And then we'll just get back to the main page here. Activity discarded. There we go. Um, now these are sort of the widgets, so I can go up and down by pressing this button right here, uh, and this will go through, you can see again, my heart rate over the last four hours. Uh, I can go down here, my day showing uh, the two hour ride earlier. Uh, you got calorie steps and so on if I go into this menu. If I click on back here, I can keep on going down through here. So these are notifications that, that have come up over the last little while. Uh, this is my hotel for tonight, uh, so my calendar view. Uh, the weather right now, this is in Fahrenheit. Uh, let's see, this is the, the current stress level um, based on the last stress reading that I had right there. Uh, this is whatever Spotify was playing. Uh, I, I don't know why Justin Timberlake is playing on my Spotify. I'm, I don't know. Um, and this is back to the watch face itself. And again, you can customize these in the menu here. Uh, so if I go down to settings, I can go down and add Add different widgets uh, within this area here. Okay, so lastly, let's talk briefly about accuracy. Overall, it's been pretty good for me. I've, I've been using it now for about a month, uh, and from a elevation standpoint and from a GPS track standpoint, it's pretty good. I've seen a couple little bobbles in the last, uh, like maybe three or four weeks ago, but that's like a lot of beta versions ago now. Uh, I mean, a lot of beta versions. So I think I, it's been the last couple weeks, it's been pretty clean, no real issues to note. Uh, from an optical heart rate standpoint, it's more or less the same as the rest of Garmin's optical heart rate uh, sensors, which means that, um, at least from the accuracy standpoint of what I've seen to date, uh, which means that it's great for steady state running. It's mostly good for long intervals of running in terms of following that heart rate optically. Um, biking is still pretty much crap for me. Uh, it's not horrible, but it's not like good. Um, it's not as good as like a Polar's Vantage series and stuff like that from an optical heart rate standpoint. Uh, for that, I'd probably recommend a chest strap. Uh, so you can check out more details of that from an accuracy standpoint in my full in review link down below there. I got tons of sample rides and runs and hikes and all sorts of stuff that you can dig into. Uh, so definitely check that out as well. With that, I hope you found this interesting. Go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom there if you did. Also whack that subscribe button as well if you want more sports technology goodness. Uh, there's plenty more to come, especially as we get closer to the holiday season. There'll be some kind of like last minute things that companies are trying to sneak out uh, to take your money for the holidays. That, have a good one. <laughs>